Well, some folks online have uh, twisted my arm and uh, have asked for a uh, little tutorial on uh, how to do the moving background plate, how to create the seamless background plate. And there are a lot of ways, I'm sure. This is the way that uh, I pretty much did it for the little background plate demonstration I did. Uh, let's just go ahead and uh, create a real simple moving plate, seamless. Let's pick the uh, background, clear day, turn off my grid. I'm going to do this particular tutorial in uh, version 5. This should translate very well into 6. 6 just runs a little sluggish for me. So uh, I'm going to do it in 5. Hope you don't mind. But all the techniques will work just fine in 6. Uh, okay, let's uh, adjust our camera. And uh, let's give it a 35 millimeter lens. You'll get more distortion, obviously, uh, if you get a wide focal length. So, uh, you know, 35 is not too bad. The tighter, the better. 50 will be fine, but I want to see a little more of the background. So, uh, let's do it that way. And uh, you can adjust it accordingly, depending on what you want to see. And uh, let's create a camera. And uh, let's just go up here and add a camera. And now we'll open up our timeline for that particular camera and down here go to transform and uh, I'm just going to do a quick one with the uh, standard number of frames I'm going to click down on the timeline around 400 or so and uh, let's go up and rotate our camera uh, well first first let's set our camera to zero just to make things easy zero degrees there on the Z and now let's go and set a, a keyframe and set that for 90 and let's go set another keyframe for 180 and this is kind of the way you need to do rotations at least I found in iClone you have to do your rotations in increments you can't just go from 0 to 360 or it'll not exactly do what you need it to do so now you can see what we've done here and we've just simply set these keyframes at uh, the correct intervals 90 180 270 360 and uh, let's go down to the very end here and let's set our duration tick mark here to uh, right there and let's turn on looping which it is on but let's set it again let's watch and see if it loops a little hitch right there so let's zoom in and uh, make sure we've got our duration just right there we go and you can see it's a little off so right there now okay now it looks pretty good pretty seamless right there at the end it repeats and doesn't seem to be a hitch or a stutter there so now you can go ahead and render that animation out and you'll have a seamless backdrop for a background plate now once again it'll of course repeat and that's what background plates uh, can do but if you cut around it you'll be okay uh, you could add some uh, trees in the background uh, I guess let's uh, stick a set of trees in here put those back there and so once again you could have some trees along the way now it'll be obvious when these repeat but uh, you can dress it up and make it a little different if you need to of course play with your lighting get your lighting just what you want uh, but that will repeat as well so all we're doing is just turning the camera 360 degrees for that particular plate okay so let's talk about the roadbed texture seamless texture as you can see here we've got a roadbed it's going to move along uh, we'll we've created an animation for it that is looping and uh, right here it is in the uh, timeline and you can simply keep extending it as long as you need to and the road 
will keep moving in place is the key. Camera is not moving at all. Okay, so what you've got to do is find your image that you're going to use. And I went to my favorite location for bitmaps is uh, cgtextures.com. It's free. They've got just tons of great images to use. They do have a section called Roads. And uh, if you look closely, uh, many times they'll have images that are called tiled images, which means they can be seamlessly used. And that's a big, big plus. So uh, look around. I found one. I think this was pretty much the one I found. Something along these lines right here, this image. It's a tiled image. You can get it in different sizes. If you become a member, you can get very large sizes, but uh, for free, uh, you can get relatively good sizes for iClone. So let's get our image, and now let's take it over into our editing program. Okay, here we are in Sony Vegas, and uh, here's the image. Uh, in the spirit of full disclosure, uh, I did take this image into my paint program and uh, cleaned it up a little bit. There were some broken white lines here and kind of fixed that. And the uh, bottom line is, though, it was seamless on the left and the right. So as it moved left to right, it would be seamless. Uh, you could make an image seamless pretty easily in your paint program, I'm sure, just by uh, copying this portion and then flipping it and then bring it over here and then doing a little feathering. Uh, so you could easily make an image seamless, but this one already was seamless, so that makes it a little bit easier. So basically all I did was uh, animate the image, move the image from uh, left to right, and I'm going to uh, start with the image full frame, and then I'm going to move it. Now, to make it move to the right, I'm actually moving to the left. But uh, that's the way it goes. And so we get right to the very edge and create a keyframe. And we've already created a keyframe automatically here. So uh, basically what's going to happen, the image is going to move like so. Uh, and that's basically all you have to do, really, uh, simply to the image. Now, we are going to duplicate this image. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to go over here where I've already finished this project. And here's the image we brought in. It's going to go that way. Now, I'm going to duplicate that image. And then I'm going to animate it this way. So it comes in and goes this way. And this image, it's already in the frame and it moves left to right. And this also moves left to right, but the image is over here. And we bring it in. So now when we bring these two images on top of each other, uh, you'll see the seamless lines moving along here. You can't see it because it's seamless. And uh, let me turn on the looping feature of Vegas. And now we go down to the end. And we can check and see that it's pretty seamless. Now, uh, if you need to, the road to move faster, it's obviously moving kind of slow here, you'll need to just uh, tighten up that keyframe. So now it moves much faster here. The other big thing I found, at least in Vegas, when I rendered out an AVI or a Windows Media file for iClone, uh, I did need to go, notice the very last frame is black and that's not a good thing so I had to uh, render take a frame off so now it will be more seamless uh, when it comes into uh, iClone I noticed in iClone if I didn't do that there would be a black frame at each loop point and that's certainly not a good thing but uh, that's basically what you're going to do you're going to render these out now into files that can be read in iClone which will be an AVI which is a little more taxing on iClone, and I chose uh, Windows Media files, and they seem to work pretty good. Okay, we're back in iClone 5, and as I say, all of these techniques will work just as well in iClone 6. Things will just be located a little different. I'm going to drag in the animation. I'm going to hold down the Control key, drag the little animation that we did in Sony Vegas, and... Uh, here it is, and uh, you'll see that it is animating. Okay, we'll probably want to turn it around, flip it around. So let me go ahead and do this and rotate it because I want the road going this way. Uh, and still works very nicely. Now, if we want to stretch it out, notice uh, what happens. It gets kind of wonky. So we've made some alterations to our little uh, bitmap that we drug in. So we'll need to reset transform. And that will allow you then to stretch it out. And so we'll stretch it out for now. And of course, we've just stretched that one piece of animation. 
moving uh, kind of fast. You'll notice that you can control the speed a little bit in iClone by determining how many of these animation clips you're going to tile. So let's tile a few more of these. And let's say a five. And now notice we're moving a little slower. And so that's one way uh, you can control speed. You're kind of stretching that bitmap out a bit. Go 10 tiles, goes very slow. But it is seamless, and that's the beauty part of rendering it. Now, it only ran for a little a bit because, of course, that particular piece of video is only one time. So I'm going to drag a few more out. And uh, let's go ahead and make sure our animation here is getting all the benefit. There we go. And now you'll see that our animation will move very nicely and seamlessly. So uh, let's go back to about uh, six or so. And that's a good speed for our jogger. Now our other little bit of animation is the uh, sky. Once, once again, holding down the control key and dragging our animation in. And there it is. And uh, you can flip it around any direction you need it. And we'll enlarge it. And uh, now it, of course, looks like uh, the road's high in the mountains is the effect I'm sure we're going after. So here we have pretty much everything together in iClone. And uh, once again, as I say, you can adjust the tiling of the roadbed since it's seamless from end to end. Uh, it'll work. You can't adjust the tiling in this particular type of uh, looping backdrop animation because it's not seamless. You might be able to create a uh, image that would work as a background and make it seamless like we have the road so that you could uh, play with the tiling and speed there too. So that might be fun. So uh, there you have it.